Hello, my name is Mari, and this is the second part of the CT registry review. In this part, we are going to talk about safety. For the safety part of the ARTCT registry, there will be 22 questions. It will talk about radiation safety and dose, radiation physics, radiation protection, dose measurement, personnel protection. So questions will be asked regarding these topics right here. And this is just showing the ART outline again. And you see the orange arrows pointing to safety. This is what we are going to talk about today, which will be about 22 questions for the safety part. Now we are going to talk about the radiation physics. The CT reconstruction image is in 2D. You have your attenuation whenever you see this. This is the reduction of intensity of a radiation beam as it passes through a substance. You also have photoelectric effect, which is the radiation quanta that may be absorbed. Whenever you see photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering, this should bring back memories of whenever you were in x-ray school. It talks about, for the photoelectric absorption, how it occurs whenever the energy of an incoming incident x-ray photon it is going to be completely removed or absorbed from the inner shell electron of the target. You also have X-ray photons within the primary beam. It may also go through Compton scattering. And Compton scattering is whenever an incident X-ray photon interacts with an outer shell electron. This is going to result in a loss of energy from that incident X-ray photon because it is going to change directions. Also remember that the filtration within the CT X-ray tube is going to be between 6 and 9 millimeters aluminum. The purpose of filtration in CT is going to be to remove unwanted, low-quality portions of the X-ray beam that is going to add to the patient radiation dose. So the filters that we use in CT, you will see beam shaping or bow tie filters. This will be added to the x-ray tube to compensate for different body shapes. So the more filtration that is going to be added, this will reduce the patient dose. So you also have certain factors that's going to affect patient dose, which will be your source detector distance, focus to isocenter distance, focus to detector distance. So position your patients correctly because if they are not centered inside of the CT gantry correctly, this can increase patient dose. For your detector efficiency, this is going to help reduce patient radiation dose. So make sure you understand what overbeaming is, which is going to expand the beam further to avoid exposing the detector to penumbra. And just in case you do not remember, Penumbra is the blurring or fizziness of an image, especially along the edges of that object. And also keep in mind that the multi-detector computer tomography that we have, it can result in an increase in patient radiation dose compared to the single slide CT scanner. Just keep in mind that patient dose is higher with multi-detector CT. This is because the decrease in the focus to detector distance, the use of a cone beam instead of a fan beam, increasing the number of phases of acquisitions, and use of thinner section widths for improvement of 3D and NPR images. So for radiation protection in CT, you want to make sure you are following that ALORA principle that you learned back in X-ray, that time, distance, and shielding. And you also want to make sure you follow these three principles. You want to have a strict clinical indication, protocol optimization. If you are not familiar with protocols, maybe the manager or supervisor can have an apps person come out and train new and current staff members. Make sure that you are shielding and only scan the body that you should be scanning. If you have an order for a CT head, don't include a CT cervical spine or half of the CT cervical spine. Whenever you have a pediatric patient, make sure you are using the correct protocol for them, such as if you are scanning a pediatric head, 
you do not want to scan that head under an adult protocol because this will increase the radiation dose to that patient. For your protocol optimization, this is going to be the process of adjusting the parameters such as your MA, your KVP, slice thickness, and pitch. Your patient radiation dose is reduced and the image quality is adequate. Also keep in mind a decrease in KVP will decrease the quantity of x-ray produced by the CT tube. This will decrease patient exposure and dose. You have your MA. This is going to affect the scan time and patient radiation dose. If your mass is doubled, the patient radiation dose is doubled. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind about your dose profile. This is the section of the patient that is going to be exposed to radiation. Also keep in mind CT scanners rarely use a single slice. And you also have noise that will make the image grainy. So noise is information that we do not need. It is not useful for the CT image. And an increase in MA to reduce the noise on the CT images, it will increase patient dose. So a lot of times you may see someone want to change mass to reduce that noise, but that will increase the patient dose if you do that. You have your kernel, which is the selective reconstruction algorithm. Lower your dose images will increase your image noise. Reduce noise by using the correct kernel. You also want to make sure that whenever you do have a patient size that is decreasing, the image noise will decrease as well. Have a protocol in place that uses a size-based mask whenever you do have to adjust and lower the radiation dose that is needed for children. So increasing mass to reduce noise, it will increase the radiation dose to the patient. Your images will look better because it won't be grainy, but your patients will have a higher radiation dose. So this is also um, important to know whenever you have to shield your patient, um, especially if they have radiosensitive tissue such as breast, gonads, you want to make sure that you provide a lead apron shield for family members, any type of medical staff personnel such as nurses, doctors, or other CT techs or other radiology techs if they need to stay in the room to assist a patient. Sometimes a patient may be claustrophobic or they may be mentally altered, or it may be some reason why someone needs to stay in the room with them. So just make sure you are wearing that lead apron shield. These are terms that you need to know. Convert them to memory. A lot of these terms you will know whenever you studied your x-ray school. So just keep all of these terms in mind and the definition because this is important to know. More terms that you need to keep in mind. This is going to talk about the multiple scan average dose. Also talk about dose land product. So whenever you are scanning a patient at the end, you will have a radiation dose. This will get sent to PACS with the patient information and images just to let everyone know how much radiation dose was given to the patient. Whenever you are scanning a patient and you will see different notifications come up, it will say dose alert, especially if you have to adjust something. This will remind you and alert you that the protocol that is selected, maybe the patient's body habits need more to do the imaging and do it correctly. So this notification will come up whenever you are exceeding the dose requirements. So to reduce radiation dose in pediatric patients, if you are scanning PEDs, you wanna make sure that you eliminate CT scans for inappropriate indication. So if the doctor ordered a foot, don't scan all the way up to the knee. The doctor will have to put in another order for the knee or the leg or the tear field. So only scan what was ordered. You want to make sure that you take away any delays that is causing imaging or for the scan to be longer if not needed. Reduce your MA, reduce your KVP. You can increase your pitch with pediatric patients. Also remember image gently. 
This is offering guidelines to help reduce pediatric radiation exposure from CT imaging. More information about this is for their guidelines. You have your MA and KBP that should be child size. If you do not scan pediatric patients often, just make sure that you set yourself a note to the side or just remind yourself to scan under a pediatric protocol and not an adult protocol. If you aren't comfortable with scanning pediatric patients, just ask another technologist what you should do to help reduce the radiation dose to that patient. Thank you all for watching this short presentation. This safety presentation, it is going along with the patient care that I did in the previous lesson. That's why this presentation is not as long because this is just following what should have been or what was covered in the patient care section. This section on the ART registry is pretty small, so it goes along with patient care. If you have not watched that video, go back and watch the patient care video, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you all for watching, and please stay tuned for the next lesson. Thank you.